What's up, you guys? Matt with Texas Edge Home Inspections. Today, I'm doing a pre-drywall inspection. It's a little bit loud because they're nailing up brick ties to the exterior wall, so I hope you can hear all this, but I am finding some quite concerning things, and it's just disappointing, the lack of concern that people have whenever they're putting these houses together. So come with me and take a look at some of the things I'm finding today. One of the first things I noticed was this crack in the garage floor that extended all the way through the front entryway and all the way over to the grade beam. So I took a walk outside just to see what it looked like on the outside and you can see here's that same crack on the outside and it looks pretty substantial, a little bit larger than what we're used to seeing and as we walk around we start to find a few more of them. And to be quite honest with you, finding cracks in the slab even at this stage isn't that uncommon. However, Usually what we'd find would be hairline cracks, which are small cracks that happen during the drying process. But these cracks look a little bit more substantial, and I have a little trouble understanding why they exist and why there are so many of them. And as we go around here, I'm going to show you this is probably the largest one right here. And after we get done taking a look at this, I'm going to take you back inside and just show you how many more of them there are on the slab throughout the house. Okay, and so this is the second one that we found outside, and you can see it extends all the way over, and, uh, and he, you can see a stack of drywall here, because they plan on putting drywall up any minute now. Uh, and then this crack just continues, and it connects to probably the one that uh, was coming out of the garage, and it continues out this direction, and we just kind of keep following them, and we keep finding them, and we keep finding them kind of connect and branch off with more cracking here and there. This is one of the larger ones as well. And as we get over here in the corner, this is the one that we saw last on the outside. There's a slight, just slight offset from one side to the other. Makes me feel pretty uncomfortable. Here's another thing that concerned me is we have a post-tension chair. Uh, this is supposed to hold down a post-tension cable. Either the cable's too close to the surface of the concrete, or this is just a loose chair that didn't get pulled out before they poured. Now, all of these things do not just scream foundation failure necessarily to me, but what it does is it leads me to believe that I need to recommend a professional engineer come out here and take a look at this and make sure that everything is okay and see what needs to be done to correct these issues. On to some other things here. This pipe is lacking insulation, and, well, I'll just go ahead and fix that. Okay, now let's find some other problems. This electrical core here, this 240 line right here, this is probably going to the oven. Looks like they... Uh, Damage the insulation on it whenever they stapled it in place. That needs to be very sure. Now, obviously, this can be cleaned up, and I don't know why it exists in the first place, but we have construction adhesive, and a lot of it over here that is just gunking up the siding out here. I'm not sure why this got put there, and it definitely needs to be taken off. As we walk the outside of the house, we see a damaged piece of soffit. This is a good time to find this because this is going to get exponentially more difficult to replace if we don't do it at this stage. Next, we take a look up on the roof and we see some of these shingles that are uh, cupped up like this. And this is because the nails did not get driven in all the way. You can't really see this with the camera, but when I reach my finger in there, I can actually feel the nail and how it's pushing up on the shingle. And so these need to get driven in flush with the shingle material. And now this isn't a huge deal, but when we go up here, we see some damaged shingles as well. Now this kind of stuff that I'm about to show you is going on all over the house, but this thermal ply sheathing, we got holes in it. It's loosely fastened in some areas. These nails are supposed to be driven in flush as well. And as you can see, they are not. And this is just going on all around the house. And honestly, this is all too common to find this material in this shape. <laughs> 